very good morning students today uh, we are going to continue the downstream processing uh, the next topic is uh, chromatography techniques so this chromatography techniques the techniques are very important uh, for downstream processing and uh, okay this is a, a very sophisticated technology also and the basic uh, starting of chromatography technique starts with adsorption chromatography okay with a simple glass column with silica gel or alumina and that is used for uh, the pigmented particle separation that is uh, the pigments especially the carotenes uh, and the flavonoids okay that type of uh, pigments can be separated okay in the previous times okay that is why that is why it is called as chromatography chromato means a colored substance chromato means a chrome means color graphy means separation and the pattern is called as graphy so this chromatography the word originated from the colored substance separation okay technique that is why it is called as chromatography but nowadays okay we are not uh, following only the colored substances so we are uh, using the principle of uh, chromatography in different ways okay of uh, separation techniques and downstream processing especially in the protein purification we have n number of techniques ion exchange uh, chromatography affinity chromatography and gel filtration chromatography hydrophobic inclusion chromatography and uh, hydrophobic uh, uh, chromatography also and all these chromatography techniques are very important in the the application point of view and we are going to see in detail as a pg students we can go one by one and this is the, the introduction about the chromatography you can see here uh, the different types uh, of uh, chromatography adsorption ion exchange gel permeation or uh, gel filtration chromatography both are same only and affinity chromatography reverse phase chromatography high performance liquid chromatography that is hplc and we have fplc and uplc also fplc means uh, fast performance uh, uh, liquid chromatography okay and uh, that is very useful for protein separation and the latest one is uplc that is ultra performance uh, liquid chromatography and we have in your syllabus only this level okay that is hplc because this is more than enough to get a job in the industry and fplc and the uplc or uh, maybe the sophisticated versions and that is uh, very expensive also maybe most of the industry they don't have okay the type of uh, sophistication but very advanced one okay that is the mnc companies okay they have okay this type of uh, fplc and uh, uplc also and in many fermentation processes uh, the chromatography techniques are used to isolate the purify Uh, relatively low concentrations of metabolic products and chromatographic techniques and methods uh, separate uh, solutes based on the charge so the main principle is based on the charge we can separate and polarity that is interaction with water and the size of the molecule and the interaction with the other substances like affinity so in this uh, context the chromatography will be concerned with the the passage and separation of different solute as liquid that is the mobile phase and another phase also there okay that is stationary phase stationary means static phase that is idle and we are going to pass the mobile phase with the substance to be separated that is why it is called as mobile phase and it is passed through through a column and that is called as this is called as liquid chromatography the liquid means we are going to use a liquid that is mobile phase is a liquid at the same time another chromatography is also there gas chromatography there the mobile phase is gas okay instead of liquid we are going to use a gas like nitrogen gas okay so and some of the inert gases okay we can use that one so that is why we have the two branches in chromatography either we can use a liquid as a mobile phase that is why it is called as liquid chromatography and all the different types okay comes under liquid chromatography and one more uh, type is there that is uh, using gas as a mobile phase that is gas chromatography so this gas chromatography that is uh, gc is very famous uh, for the separation of uh, uh, volatile substances like um, maybe terpenoids okay likewise maybe the most uh, hydrophobic substances uh, most volatile substances we can use it for the separation so depending on the mechanism in the within the um, uh, liquid chromatography we can separate all the liquid chromatography into different types and uh, this is a basic setup of uh, chromatography column for liquid chromatography we are not going to focus gas chromatography only liquid chromatography and uh, this is simply a burette stand you can see here this is a burette stand and this is a burette 
actually this burette is uh, maybe uh, maybe high standard burette and we have the cap on the top and uh, we can insert the tubing okay this is called as uh, high highly sterile teflon tubing and this we can insert okay into that and the outlet uh, there is a stopcock is there and the outlet when be connected with the fraction collector and uh, before entering into the fraction collector this is going into the pump and uv monitor also so this uv monitor will detect okay what is the sample is coming out what is the absorption that is delta a at a particular wavelength that is um, uh, 280 nanometer and 260 nanometer also if any contamination of dna is also there we can detect it that is dual wavelength usually the 260 nanometer is more than sufficient okay for this and after that okay this is going to the fraction collector this is a setup and the inlet is coming from the reservoir there is a reservoir will be there and this reservoir is connected to the pump also now the pump is push uh, the liquid into the column okay that is what so this is the reservoir the schematic representation this is a uh, the marriott flask the reservoir of uh, the solvent and uh, so this is a loop uh, this is called a safety loop because if anything is uh, this reservoir is emptied so this will not uh, go beyond this level okay that is why this level is a safety level and this is a basic setup of the safety loop this safety loop is very important if the safety loop is not followed in your uh, chromatography automatically the column will be dried off if it is dried uh, maybe you cannot use it for efficiently in the next term of uh, separation and sometimes okay if you are in the middle of uh, purification your column is dried means okay that is the end of your uh, separation process you should not uh, dry this column that is why the safety loop is very important both uh, the pre safety loop and the post safety loop both are very important and this safety loop is connected the end of the safety loop, safety loop is uh, the post safety loop is connected with the fraction collector and i'll show the diagram uh, for this one i this is my diagram okay this is you can see here this is a reservoir and connected with the column and the outlet of the column is connected with the fraction collector okay and uh, coming to the uh, this is a, a schematic representation and this real setup okay next coming to the first uh, the method of uh, chromatography that is absorption chromatography this uh, absorption chromatography involves binding of the solute to the solid phase and uh, primarily by weak van der waals forces and the materials used for the purpose of uh, pack the columns include inorganic uh, uh, adsorbs and uh, adsorbents okay that is active carbon okay active activated uh, carbon and uh, aluminum oxide aluminum hydroxide magnesium oxide silica gel so this is a basic type of chromatography the the best example is silica gel is packed on the column so that is a burette and uh, so we can pour uh, different uh, the mixture of solutions on the top and automatically we can separate by passing the liquid and we can separate uh, based on the chromatogram that means uh, the the colored substances are separated in a different fractions so this is the basic one this is called as uh, the main principle is adsorption means attachment this attachment is and uh, by weak interactions of the solute the solute means uh, the substances to be separated that's called a solute and uh, solvent is the mobile phase okay used for the separation so the solute will attach with the resin okay the silica gel by van der waals forces and by weak interaction you know very well van der waals is a very weak interaction that is why if you are pouring the solvent automatically that will be separated from the attached resin and uh, the de the detachment of uh, the resin okay from the column uh, from the media that maybe depends on its polarity if it is more polar and or uh, and maybe less polar okay based on that we can separate it and based on the solvent okay you are going to use it what type of solvent whether you are going to have the highly uh, polar solvent or medium polar or low polar so the based on that also the the pigment or uh, the solutes can be detached from the column so that is why this is one is this one is absorption chromatography next coming to ion exchange uh, chromatography the ba the name itself it shows ion exchange ion exchange means uh, there is an exchange of ions happening okay in this chromatography that is why it is called as ion exchange chromatography the uh, the simple abbreviation of ion exchange chromatography is iex okay ion exchange the first letter of okay this one and iex chromatography ion exchange can be defined as a reversible exchange of ions uh, between a liquid phase and a solid phase the from the liquid phase and solid phase okay there is an interaction of ions 
and uh, if there is a cation ion is there that is called as uh, cation ion exchange is there cation ex ion exchange chromatography if it is an anion ion is exchanged okay that is called as anion ion exchange chromatography for example here the cation ion exchange resins normally contain sulfonic acid carboxylic acid and uh, the phosphonic acid active groups okay that is negatively charged okay carboxy methyl cellulose is a common cation okay that is exchange resin okay carboxy cm cellulose that carboxy methyl cellulose so carboxy means coo minus methyl means ch3 and the cellulose moiety is attached so the 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 resin having the negative charge and which one is uh, going to be uh, maybe exchanged means uh, here only the positive charge because the resin is immobile phase and the mobile phase is uh, the solute the solute is the positively charged molecule that is what is called as cation cation is positive cation is going to be exchanged that is why positively charged solute that is certain proteins having the overall charge is uh, positive will bind to the resin the strength of the attachment is depends on the net charge of the solute at the ph of the column feed so what is the ph you are going to use it and the temperature also play a role because you should not use okay the adverse temperatures and you should use always in the refrigerated conditions or otherwise in the cold room the for the constant uh, delivery of uh, the fluid flow and also the con constantly maintain the the column temperature also if uh, the column temperature is varying automatically there will form some air bubbles within the column so that will interact with uh, the the flow of uh, liquid okay from the column top of the column to bottom of the column so that is why we have to be very careful in this ion exchange chromatography not only this okay all the chromatography techniques are very complex and we have to standardize it everything before uh, running the purification step so this uh, uh, the strength of the attachment uh, depends on the net charge of the solute of the ph on the column feed after deposition of the solutes are subsequently washed off by the passage of buffers of increasing ionic strength or ph the attachment is uh, uh, detached okay maybe the if, if the ion if this is negatively charged okay the cation cationic ion uh, the resin and uh, through that okay we are going to pour the positively charged one if it is less positive medium positive and high positive based on that the interaction may be there we can change the ph so due to that uh, we can you can add uh, Uh, the the different sodium sodium chloride concentrations the low uh, concentration of sodium chloride to highest concentration of sodium chloride like two molar co sodium chloride concentration so uh, the based on that uh, the sodium ions na plus and cl minus the na plus will go and bind to the resin and uh, removes that um, uh, that positively charged protein so the based on the concentration because if if you want to remove the the weakly attached one the low concentration of sodium chloride is enough if you want to detach okay highly bound okay the very strongly bound the protein into the uh, protein to the column means okay the, you need more concentration of uh, sodium chloride that is why the low concentration of uh, sodium chloride concentration to higher concentration of sodium chloride is re required okay slowly you can increase the uh, gradient okay that is what is called as the gradient the ionic gradient okay can be formed and i will exchange i will explain to you okay how to prepare the uh, the gradient okay in the laboratory itself the very simple uh, technique next coming to the anion exchange uh, chromatography the anion exchange the resin is anion anion means a positively charged so usually here uh, diethyl ammonium ethyl cellulose is very famous diethyl ammonium ethyl cellulose okay ammonium ion here that is nh4 plus uh, okay that is a positively charged one so this ammonium ion attached with the uh, cellulose by diethyl amino ethyl and uh, diethyl amino ethyl cellulose the amino group is nh4 that is a uh, uh, positively charged one that will give the positive charge to the resin and uh, so this positively charged resin is used in a similar manner okay described here above okay the same thing and uh, we have to pour the liquid okay that is a uh, proteins with negatively charged uh, property that we here this is positively charged protein we are using it and in this case of okay anion exchange protein we have to use only the negatively charged if you are using the positively charged positive positive and will not uh, attract okay maybe all the proteins will not be bound to the resin and automatically will be coming out washed away from the column so we have to be very careful first before going to the ion exchange chromatography you have to identify what is the net charge of your protein of interest 
you have a cocktail of uh, protein solution from that you want to separate a particular protein of interest your interest you should remember that what is the net charge of your protein if your net charge of protein is uh, positively charged okay that is net charge is positive and you have to choose the cation exchange chromatography the resin charge is negative and your protein charge is positive and if your protein charge is uh, negative automatically you have to choose anion exchange chromatography anion exchange means the positively charged resin and you can use the negatively charged uh, particles so that is your protein so this is the way you have to do it and you should not do the mistake of uh, knowingly using the different resins and finally end up with the failure of the experiment the appropriate resin for the particular purpose uh, will depend on various factors such as the bead size pore size and the diffusion rate uh, resin capacity and uh, uh, range of reactive groups and life of the resin before uh, replacement is necessary because we cannot use indefinitely the resins because the life of the resin is also there you can use okay may- maybe the you can effectively use under uh, the recommended conditions okay given by the different uh, manufacturers so based on that if you are following it you can uh, maintain the resins uh, without any degradation The weak acid cation ion exchange resins can be used in the isolation of purification of streptomycin, neomycin and other antibiotics also. Not only the proteins and you can separate the charged antibiotics that is streptomycin, neomycin and similar antibiotics also. So these are the examples of the resins and uh, commonly used in the, uh, the research laboratories and also the institutions. The teaching level also we can use okay, this type of uh, different ones. maybe uh, the detail okay it is given in this uh, here okay that is uh, anion exchanges i already told anion exchanges are the positively charged one this is a positively charged the resin is positive charge and so this is very strong anion exchange is uh, quaternary ammonium and uh, the, these are the two are weakly uh, interacting one usually for the protein separation we can use a weakly interacting one either uh, we can use this type okay diethyl amino ethyl cellulose that is very famously known as da cellulose and uh, anx cellulose is also there but uh, when compared to this this is very little expensive and diethyl amino propyl alcohol okay and uh, this one is very cheap when compared to all the different types and uh, this may be used very effectively for anion exchange chromatography next coming to the cation exchange chromatography so these are the functional groups you can see here so3 minus so3 minus this is coo minus and very strong category there are two one sulfo propyl uh, mm, anion exchanger and methyl sulfonate uh, anion exchange both are little expensive and uh, this is not recommended for uh, protein separation sometimes the proteins are attached so much very tight to the resins and uh, the, the removal may be the difficult so that is why we can use a uh, carboxy methyl cellulose there is carboxyl group and this is methyl group attached with the cellulose so this is cellulose actually so to all these things okay maybe the cellulose will be attached this is and carboxy methyl cellulose is a very famous one this is a weak interaction and the carboxy methyl cellulose is very commonly used as cm cellulose okay for the cation exchange chromatography so this is the the preparation of a gradient okay within the laboratory you don't have uh, the gradient former or otherwise uh, the gradient generated equipment so you have to spend much much amount of money for that maybe you can design your own setup in the laboratory okay to prepare the gradient okay, you can see here this is the salt solution so usually the two molar or three molar salt will be there and uh, you have to place okay both uh, the beakers this is 5 ml beaker or 1 liter beaker maybe and uh, both the beakers should be placed on the same level you can see here this is the same level and uh, this beaker okay the second beaker uh, should have uh, the buffer okay buffer means usually the phosphate buffer or acetate buffer okay whatever may be uh, recommended for your protein separation you can use it any type of buffer with uh, the the concentration may be 20 millimolar concentration to uh, 40 millimolar or 100 millimolar concentration based on your uh, recommended uh, setup and this is only a buffer the green color is only a buffer and uh, orange color is uh, the color of the sodium chloride solution that may be two molar solution or three molar solution and uh, this one we have to keep it in the on the magnetic stirrer and we can switch on the magnetic stirrer and you can you can place the bead magnetic bead inside the main uh, the application of the magnetic bead is that will rotate if you are uh, switching on the machine automatically if a drop is coming from here that will be mixed immediately 
okay there is no point of lagging or there is uh, forming a bottom layer of uh, sodium chloride concentration if a drop is coming out okay from this one uh, maybe if it is coming one drop automatically that will be mixed completely and after mixing okay this will be connected with the column so how we can connect okay this one by simply siphoning process you know very well okay the siphoning process means just you can take a tube okay this is a maybe a, a sterile tube or teflon tube you can use it and you can attach a, a syringe on this end or maybe you can suck all the liquid and keep all the liquid okay till this point and fold it and insert okay within this automatically uh, you know this liquid will come directly to the uh, Uh, to this beaker and uh, without any air bubbles so you should ensure that okay there is no air bubble okay inside this uh, tube and uh, you have to switch on okay this one at the same time okay the same siphoning process you can also do it for the loading onto the column so the column top you can siphon it and keep it ready and attach okay with this one and before attachment okay you can remove all the air bubbles so before attachment you have to remove all the air bubbles by simply losing some of the liquid and attach with this now this column is ready column is always okay either uh, da cellulose or cm cellulose based on your type of uh, uh, protein of interest you can choose it and the column is ready with the buffering and the outlet of the column is attached with the fraction collector so we have a bio rad fraction collector in our uh, cms college okay this that is approximately 3.2 lakhs and um, okay that one is a very uh, effective okay for the collection of all the frac uh, fractions nearly 300 fractions you can collect it okay each and every ml or otherwise a 500 ml find uh, find uh, microliters or 200 microliters whatever maybe you can collect it either drop wise manner or otherwise uh, ml manner okay the milliliters manner if you want uh, maybe the milliliters 3 milliliter one one uh, fraction means uh, that is one tube you can collect or otherwise three drops or four drops or five drops so there is a uh, drop sensor is there okay that will detect the drop also so this is a setup of uh, the preparation of gradient for example if you are siphoning it if you open the cork or a stop cork automatically a drop is coming out if a drop is coming out okay this will take another drop okay from here if one drop is going there to equal that is uh, to neutralize uh, maybe the the pressure density automatically one drop of salt solution is going to come here and we have attached with the magnetic stirrer now the, the first drop is without any sodium chloride and the second drop is uh, if it is taking means automatically another drop is going to come here that is sodium chloride concentration so initially there is a less sodium chloride concentration and slowly the sodium chloride concentration is going to be increased because if one one ml is goes here means another one ml is going to here going to come here the initially is a zero sodium chloride here that is a buffer only buffer but slowly the the concentration of sodium chloride going to be increased here so that is why there is a gradient is formed okay that is what is called as the preparation of gradient okay for uh, ion exchange chromatography so this is the principle of uh, cation exchange chromatography you can see here uh, this is a negatively charged resin and if you are zooming okay this resins on the column and uh, this is a bead if you are taking one bead okay this will be the setup and negatively charged bead and positively charged you can see here the highly positively charged and less positively charged and negatively charged one usually negative negative repel each other that is why it will not negative charge either it is uh, weak negative or moderate uh, negative or there is uh, a strong negative okay all the negative categories negative negative will repel each other so it will not bind so only the positive will bind okay to this resin so that is why then uh, you can you can add the low salt concentration just now i said okay that there is a gradient you can pass the low Uh, salt gradient initially and uh, maybe the medium salt concentration and high salt concentration initially the weakly bound one okay the weak uh, uh, ionic interaction for example so this one you can see here only one positive charge is there if a low salt is added that is sodium chloride concentration if you are dissolving the sodium chloride that will give na plus and cl minus even low concentration of na plus is more than sufficient to detach okay this molecule attached to the resin so that is why initially okay this uh, uh, the f- the first molecule is going to be separated as uh, less positively charged okay and uh, this is initially negatively charged one is going to be collected because as a washing process all the unbound one okay going to be collected is the first fraction and you can see here the medium salt buffer concentration okay this you will get all the neg- the, uh, the dark blue color 
and next one is light blue color will be coming out so that means the negatively charged one without any attachment that is coming okay in the initial fractions that means if you are adding if you are passing only the buffer also that will come out because there is no interaction so that is why you can collect the fractions based on the negatively charged to positively charged in the last and to remove the very tightly bound uh, Mm, positively charged means that cannot be removed okay by uh, uh, gradient centrifugation uh, the gradient uh, formation and you have to use three molar concentration as a batch and you can remove all the very tightly bound uh, proteins on the resin that is a complete uh, regeneration of uh, uh, chromato chromatography column okay this, this, this is set up and i'll show the animation also here you can have a look okay this is a very famous company okay this cytivia initially amersham biosciences and they are the leaders in chromatography making of chromatography equipments and alls and uh, uh, still now okay they are the leaders in chromatography and uh, especially okay this cytivia is involved in uh, the preparation of uh, uh, protein purification machines okay like um, acta acta purification systems all the acta prime and acta start and acta high end models prepared by cytivia based on the protein purification is everything is automated and you will get uh, reproducible results by using acta systems so this is a video derived from uh, cytivia okay website and this is a video got it from the youtube link Separation in ion exchange chromatography depends upon the reversible adsorption of charged solute molecules to immobilized groups of opposite charge. Most ion exchange experiments are performed in four main stages. Equilibration, sample application and wash, elution, and regeneration. The first step is the equilibration of the stationary phase to the desired start conditions. When equilibrium is reached, all stationary phase charged groups are associated with exchangeable counter ions, such as chloride or sodium. The second step is sample application and wash. The goal in this step is to bind the target molecules and wash out all unbound material. The sample buffer should have the same pH and ionic strength as the starting buffer, in order to bind all appropriately charged proteins. In the third step, elution, biomolecules are released from the ion exchanger by a change in the buffer composition. A common way is to increase the ionic strength with sodium chloride or another simple salt in order to desorb the bound proteins. Proteins are desorbed relative to the number of charged groups on their surface. The final step, regeneration, removes all molecules still bound. This ensures that the full capacity of the stationary phase is available for the next run. Again, I'm playing this uh, video. Separation in ion exchange chromatography depends upon So the the basic principle involves is on the uh, reversible adsorb Okay the separation in ion exchange chromatography depends on the reversible adsorption of charged solute molecules to immobilize the groups of opposite charges So this is opposite charges which are going to be applied option of charged solute molecules to immobilized groups of opposite charge most ion exchange experiments are performed in here uh, this is the column you can see high trap column of uh, cytivia and uh, so this is a company which okay, manufacturing high quality columns this is a column packed with uh, the resins so here if it is uh, de a cellulose or cm cellulose based on that we can categorize that one as a cation exchange chromatography or anion exchange chromatography so the first one is cation exchange chromography okay that is uh, the charge of uh, mm, the, the the resin is uh, negatively charged okay that means uh, cm cellulose can be used carboxy methyl cellulose can be used and uh, the ion to be exchanged is a cation okay that is why it is called as cation exchange chromatography 
and here in this video we are going to have the example of anion exchange chromatography the anion exchange means uh, the diethyl amino ethyl cellulose dia cellulose diethyl amino ethyl amino group is uh, positively charged one that is why the resin is positive you can see here four main stages equilibration sample so application and wash of, uh, elution and regeneration you can see here the first one is equilibration you can equilibrate uh, all the, um, the recent charges okay by applying the buffer second one is sample application wash you have to load the sample and after loading the sample immediately you have to wash with uh, uh, the same buffer you are going you, uh, you are going to use it for equilibration third one is elution this elution is uh, re removal of uh, the attached moieties attached uh, um, the charged ones on the resin okay that is why it is called as elution process so this elution process next one is uh, regeneration regeneration is again you can regenerate okay that um, uh, resins and by uh, you can reuse okay that one the first step is the equilibration of the stationary phase to the desired start conditions when equilibrium is reached all stationary phase charged groups are associated with exchangeable counter ions such as chloride or sodium. The second step is sample application and wash. The goal in this step is to bind the target molecules and wash out all unbound material. The sample buffer should have the same pH and ionic strength as the starting buffer in order You can see here there are four different types of molecules. This is uh, uh, this interaction is more strong and this is three negative charges and two negative charges on one, one negative charge and you can see here to bind uh, all appropriately uh, charged proteins of, uh, sodium chloride you can see here this in the third step elution biomolecules are released from the ion exchanger so by a change in the buffer the composition a common so way is to increase the ionic the strength with sodium chloride or, or another simple salt in order to desorb the bound proteins Proteins are desorbed relative to the number of charged groups on their surface. The final step, regeneration, removes all molecules still bound. This ensures that the full capacity of the stationary phase is available for the next run. So that is used for the regeneration. So with this, we can conclude ion exchange chromatography. Thanks for listening. Bye.